Hello and welcome! Time to celebrate 3000 followers, even a little bit more. Um, so I thought I'd create another tutorial for you guys. Um, Silverwing just posted a new picture today and you can see it right here. It's this 4K logo. I think it looks really, really pretty good. And I messaged him on Skype and said, okay, I'm, I'm really looking for something to, to, to model and to do today. And I want to fill up my portfolio maybe a little bit or whatever. Just want to have something to do. And said, okay, I challenge you on this one. I will try to recreate something similar a little bit with my, with my own style. And I will go with 8K and uh, did also render uh, finally then an 8K version as well of my final shot. Um, I will show you this quickly. Um, as you can see on my desktop, desktop, this is what I created. This is what I came up with. I um, was searching on the internet for a little bit of a kind of stylish eight. Um, and I found a really, really nice uh, 2D map and thought, okay, let's model this, shade it and um, light it up and then render it out. And like I said, I also did render 8K version in the end, which I think only took something like five minutes to render or something like that uh, in Octane. I only had to use 300, uh, 300 uh, samples, finally, uh, at pass tracing, and it was done. So it was pretty, pretty cool. And I thought, um, I'll show you a little bit of modeling, what I've done, a little bit of the lightning, which is not really so special, but I think absolutely okay for, for, for this particular shot. And I will show you a little bit of the shading, which is also not so much. But I think it looks great. And uh, so I thought I'd make a little tutorial as a little bonus for, for 3000 followers as well, of course. Okay, so let's set up Cinema 4D. And uh, let's see what we can do. Takes a little bit. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, so... First of all, I want to jump, uh, let's do a middle mouse click right here. Uh, let's jump into the front view, do a, another middle mouse click right here and we jump right in. Uh, let's go to options, configure, uh, back and image. And here we will load, of course, an image. Um, here is the 8. You will get this JPEG as well that I found on the internet. I will pack this up for you guys so you uh, get this one as well. And as you can see here we have our nice 8. There are also some screws in it. Um, I don't really want the screws to be honest so we will just model the 8. Okay, so um, let's bring in a plane and let's jump into rotate mode. Uh, we hit the R key on our keyboard. And now we hold, uh, we start rotating, hold down the shift key and rotate it for 90 degrees. All right. And I want to have the display at grout shading. No, grout shading lines, actually. Right here, here, ISO spams is fine. We could also go for wireframe. No, ISO spams is fine. Okay, let's click on the plane, go to basic, X-ray enabled. So I can see what I'm doing. Um, Let's get rid of all the width segments and also of all the height segments. Let's hit the C key, make the plane editable and let's bring it into place. And now let's jump into point mode and we can start modeling. And we will just basically um, bring the points into place. Uh, what you also can do, what helps you a little bit probably with modeling is if you lay out this first inside of Photoshop, um, Let's say you have this picture in Photoshop, then you can just start to draw lines where you want to make your um, um, your modeling. So we're definitely looking for uh, that we're not making any triangles. So I definitely want to be triangle free when I'm modeling. So I always want to have really nice uh, quads. And um, this is what we're looking for. Okay, all right, so here we have a nice edge right here. So this is why I put the, the point here. Here's another point. Uh, here's another edge. So this is why I did put this point right here. And I think I will move this here a little bit more upwards and also here. And what we're doing now is, I think, really, really pretty straightforward. Um, we will make a cut right here. So uh, right mouse click, knife, loop. And now we will make a cut right here and jump into line mode. Whoops, did make another cut, that's not good. Jump into line mode, select this here. Extrude. And we'll extrude, extrude this really, really far, I think. Something to down here. All right, jump into point mode. Let's hit the 
uh, W key on your keyboard and we jump into move mode. And let's bring this over here and bring this over here. Uh, okay, all right. And let's see that this, that we, well, it doesn't have to be for perfect, but when I'm, um, when I'm doing something, I'm always aiming for that it's, that it looks uh, pretty good. Um, normally I would definitely recommend that you maybe lay out in Photoshop, um, but I think it's not really necessary if you know what you're doing and uh, when you know what you're looking for when you're modeling. So, um, but at least I wanna definitely see that the points are lined up so I want to see that this point is almost lined up with this one and this point is almost lined up with this one. So just make sure that you are working a little bit more, um, let's say, how can I say that, clear, something like that, so that you're really doing it good. Okay, um, let's select this line, go to extrude again, so right click, extrude, and we bring this down here, jump into point mode, select this point right here, and bring it right down here. Now we select this line, go to extrude again, and I think we can bring this over here, maybe. I'm not sure, 100%. I think this works. Okay, let's bring this over here. Let's select the points. And now let's see that this is lined up with this edge right there. So let's select this point, bring this down here. So this is lined up. We can make more cuts later on anyway, if necessary. All right. So next thing I wanna do is, I think we will make a cut right here for this edge. So let's make a cut right here. Select this one. All right, extrude. And we will line this up with this edge right here because here starts the rounding. So this is why I wanna end this right here for now. Okay, let's bring this over here and this one over here. And we will also bring this down. Okay, let's select this line here. Extrude. Hmm, now is the question, how can I do this? Maybe something like that. Let's jump into point mode. Let's bring this up here, yes sir. And we will probably make another cut right here in the middle. No. No. Here, okay, and bring this point a little bit more down here. So we have here a little bit of a rounding. If we put this later on into a, a hypernerbs, this will uh, definitely help to, to get this uh, nice rounded shape. Um, this, this one point here, I think. But we will see later on anyway. Okay, so uh, next thing I want to do is I think I want to make a cut right. Hmm, good question. I don't want to have too much cuts right here. Um, because if you're making the cuts too close, um, this might look a little bit weird later on in the hypernerbs uh, when you have too much subdivision. So you always um, um, need to think about where you put those lines and that one line is not too close to another one because this can definitely, if we would put this line right here, something like this might look a little bit weird. So I think I will put it, well, I have to put it right here and also here, but I think it will be fine. I think we will be fine. Okay, so we take this edge, go extrude, bring this over here and let's adjust the points. And make sure that you don't move the points here in the um, in the y-axis. This would be really absolutely necessary. So make sure that you're only moving here in the um, I don't even know why this is um, why the y-axis is pointing in this direction, but doesn't really matter right now. Um, so that you're not moving the set or x-axis in this case. So you uh, so that you're only moving the set and x-axis. So you're only moving upwards and to the side and not moving the points in this direction. This would definitely not be good. All right, so let's jump back here. Um, let's bring this point into place and this one as well. Um, let's maybe bring this here a little bit more upwards. Bring it over here. And uh, might be fine, might be not. I think 
I should move this one a little bit more upwards and a little bit more like this. Okay. Let's go extrude again. And let's bring this uh, down here, I think. Yes. Okay, let's select this point, bring it down here because he's already a rounding. Now we'll select this edge, bring it over here. Perfect. Select this point, bring it down here. And we select this point and bring it over here. And I think we can here maybe make another cut. Maybe it's not necessary. I'm not 100% sure yet. Anyway, let's see it later on. Um, let's make another cut right here. And let's select this edge. Extrude. Um, by the way, there are always 100 million ways to, to model something, basically. And uh, this is just one way that I choose. So... If you think you can model it in a different way, just go for it. Absolutely no problem uh, with me. Um, like I said, there are really, I think, 100 million ways to model something. So this shouldn't be really uh, much of a problem. Okay, next thing. I think I want to change here to line mode and make a cut. Something like that, maybe. All right. Now we take this point and this point. Uh, go to uh, do a right click. Click on wield or wild. I'm not sure. No, I think it's more wield or something like that. And then we want to make sure that the points, as you can see, if I'm going with the mouse here into the middle, the points will wheel together here in the middle. If I'm moving to this point, the points will wheel together on this point. And if I'm moving here, what we want is that the points are will, wheeled, uh, will be wheeled together right here. So we just move the mouse right here over this point, do a left click, and they wheel together. All right. And do the same thing right here. I'll right click, wield. And that's it. All right. Doesn't look too good yet, but we will make some cuts and bring it into place. So I think I want to have, first of all, we need to change back here to loop. I think I want to have a cut right here, maybe. Let's first of all see how this looks. Okay, so we bring this down right here. We bring this point in, all right, and we definitely need another cut right here. And now we move this here into place as well, and here into place as well. All right, looks pretty good so far, so we will keep going. Um, we will definitely make another cut right here. Whoops. This is something that sometimes annoys me if you are in line mode, that the cut tool just doesn't work. It's just not working. Oh, it's because maybe we have still a line selected. Okay, this might be the case. And here is ticked on restrict to selection, so this might be why it's not working. Okay. Okay, let's make the cut right here and right here. All right. And let's select this one here. Go to extrude. And we extrude this up here and might even can extrude this a little bit. Yeah, something like that, I think. All right, and we will bring this point down here. And this point we will bring down, down here. Well, maybe let's make another cut, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, I think I think I will bring this down here. And we will make just simply another extrude right there. Alright, extrude. Let's make the extrude to this point. Because here starts the rounding again. And as you can see, here is everything um, even. And here starts the rounding, so I want to bring this right here before the curve starts. Okay, and let's select this one. Extrude. Uh, we bring this over here. And now we select the points. Bring this here into place. Okay, something like that. 
Okay, looking good so far. Um, okay, next thing. I think I wanna extrude both here. So hold down the shift key and select the second line as well. Extrude and we will bring both up. And let's see how we adjust the points now. That's a really good question. Or oh, maybe something like that. I think this will be okay. Uh, maybe, maybe let's go this way. Okay. All right. We will definitely make another knife cut right here. In let's try it in the middle. Bring this point up here, so we get this rounded shape a little bit better covered. And now I think it's time to make a knife cut right here. And we will extrude this one. Okay, and let's bring the points in. Yeah. Oh, okay, this looks weird. Let's adjust this point and this point. All right. Let's bring this down to something like here. And we will bring this point. Wait a second. I think we need to move those three points a little bit more upwards. Mm, yes. So we can bring this point here a little bit. Uh, bring this point in a little bit better. Okay, so we will make another cut right here in the middle. Whoop. And bring this up. All right, and we will move this one a little bit more down. Okay, let's make um, let's make another cut. Do we need another cut right here? I'm not one hundred percent sure yet. What I will do is definitely I will first of all extrude this one a little bit more. All right, and bring this point in here to something around here and this point a little bit more downwards something around here okay and now we can uh, join all these points here um, so I think first of all I will make a cut right just a second I think I will make a cut right here or maybe not I really need to think about this a little bit. Sorry for that. Um, what would be the best way? Maybe if I move this up here, might be better. Yes, of course. Okay. And let's make a knife cut right here. I think I will go for line mode and make the cut a little bit better than what loops, what the loop cut uh, offers me. I think I wanted, wanna have it something like that, maybe. Yeah, okay. And I think I will move those points a little bit closer. Yes. Okay. All right. And we will definitely make a cut right here as well. Okay. And I will go for line again. Or is it even nest? No, it's not necessary. Sorry, my my fault. Okay. What we do now is uh, we do a right click, uh, right click, click on bridge. And now we just simply left mouse click on this point, draw it down here till it hits this point. Now we uh, leave the left mouse button alone, uh, go to this point, click the left mouse button again and draw it down here, leave the left mouse uh, button and that's it. Um, double space bar to get rid of the selection. Oh, and I think there is some kind of problem maybe. We will check this later on. and. Uh, Let's do the same thing here and let's move those together. And as you can see, we should be fine. Um, one last thing maybe here. Um, good question. Might can delete this. Um, let me delete this here and this here and this here and this here and this here. And we will just move this up here a little bit more and I think this might work as well so let's bring everything back in place yes
and this one here as well. Something around here. And I think we will make another cut right here. Knife loop. Let's make the cut right here. And we should be done. All right, let's move this point here in place as well. Okay. And let's do a control A, or I think if you're on a Macintosh, maybe Apple A or something like that. Let's select all points, do a right click and click on optimize. Uh, this will get rid of all the unused points we have here now. Um, should be fine now, I think. Okay. And now we'll just simply make a cut right here. Take the bridge tool, bridge those points together and we are fine. Okay, so that's it. That was the basic modeling of the 8. Um, let's jump into poly mode, hit control A and let's see if we have some flipped polygons. As you can see here, we have a flipped polygon. So we'll just go to align normals, right click align normals. And as you can see, now everything is yellow and on the back side, everything is blue, which is perfect. All right. And let's check... Um, Let's check the model for one last time a little bit. I'm not sure if I'm really happy with this line down here, maybe. Might can do this a little bit better. Uh, maybe not. Hmm. Good question, because they are really, really, really close together. So I think I want to move those three points a little bit more upwards. And now I can move those a little bit more as well. So they are not so close together. Remember what I told you, make sure that the lines are not so close together because this might uh, cause some trouble later on in um, with the hypernerbs. Uh, okay, I will make a little cig uh, cigarette break, but this will only take uh, probably one second for you guys. So I will be right back. All right, I'm back. Um, still smoking, sorry for that. Um, but anyway, okay, so we jump into perspective mode. I think the modeling went pretty good so far. Everything looks okay to me. This is just a basic layout that we have now. Everything is quads. We have no triangles or anything else, which is absolutely good. So right now we just hit control A on our uh, keyboard while we are in polygon mode. Go to extrude, uh, make sure that create caps is ticked on because otherwise, uh, otherwise it will look something like that as you can see so you have this hole here in the back which we absolutely not want so we just go to create caps and i think i will type in here a value of 60 centimeters um yeah i think 60 might be okay and we can also go get rid of the x-ray now so we just jump into the plane x-ray and tick this off and it looks now something like that all right so we bring in a hypernerbs and let's see how it does look and as you can see it doesn't look too good yet but we will definitely fix this mm. so what we need to do if you're working with hypernerbs you definitely have to do uh, to make some cuts because um, if you have uh, those close cuts that I told you before if a line is closer to another one um, this will make the edge way more um, um, how can I say um, Jesus Christ, I'm really, really sorry when my English sucks like that. I'm really, really sorry. Um, okay, let me just show you an example. I mean, this, this might be just easier. Um, let's say we move this plane here into the subdivision surface. And here we have the plane. And as you can see, as we click here on the plane, we see the basic shape that we had before. Let's say I make a cut somewhere around here. Uh, a loop cut, which will probably go around the whole object, as you can see, which is pretty good. Uh, or do I have, yeah, loop is selected, okay. And on this edge, let's see, um, let's say I make a cut right here. As you can see, the model has definitely changed a little bit, but we still don't get this nice edge right here. So what we have to do is we need to move this closer right here so we get this really, really nice edge right here. So let's do it somewhere around here. And as you can see now, we get a much more better edge. Let's maybe up the subdivision here so we can see this a little bit better. All right. So let's go one step back and remove this cut and move it even a little bit closer. Uh, let's up this here, the subdivisions again. And 
Let's move this even a little bit closer. Let's say really, really close. You can see now we get this really, really hard edge right here. And this edge is definitely something that we want because when we're working with metal later on at the shading, we definitely want those nice uh, reflecting edges, uh, which will definitely give us a little bit more of a, of a better look in the end. All right, so let's make the cut the same right here in the back. Um, if you want to make the cuts really, really precise, what you can do is um, let's jump into the knife tool uh, while you're at loop. And while you're here on this line and searching for your perfect um, cut point, you just simply hold down the shift key. And as you can see, now it's locked. So now we can just simply type in an offset, let's say, of 5%, something like that. Uh, let's maybe make it 4 and now we do a left mouse click. And as you can see, now we get the perfect cut. And now the other side, we do exactly the same. Hold down the shift key, bring this here to 4%. And now the cut on both sides should be the same and should have the same distance. So if you want to make a more accurate cut, you can do it like that. Okay, all right. Um, so as you can see, we still have a problem here because we don't have a line around, around this, um, this inner hole here. Uh, which is a little bit bad, but we can fix this quickly. Mm. I just need to fire up my cigarette once again. Um, all right, so we just go select loop selection. And now we'll try to select this ring right here. Yes, this one. And maybe also this one. I'm not sure. I think we have to do this have to do this ring by ring, but I'm not 100% sure, but we will see. Um, let's go to the slide tool, the new slide tool in R15, and this will probably only work in R15, um, because the, sli the edge slide tool was a little bit, well, let's say, not that good like in R15. So in R15, they definitely did finally something with the slide tool, which is absolutely good. Um, so let's click on here on clone, and now we can also um, change here the offset, how much offset we want to have. Uh, well, maybe one centimeter might be fine. I'm not 100% sure. As you can see, we already see how, how sharp the edge gets here. So if you move this uh, more away, you can see the edge will be not that sharp. And if you move this closer, the edge will be really sharp. So I think something like three centimeters might be fine. Okay, someone is messaging me on Skype. Who can it be? Okay. Oh, all right, it's the almighty Raphael. Okay, whatever. Um, so as you can see, now we have our nice edge right here. So this should be pretty good. All right, so let's make a deselection here. Uh, let's maybe also fix this here on the back. Select loop selection, select this ring and this ring and we will go slide clone three centimeters is just fine uh, we will click on new transform and we are done perfect now what we need to do is i think we also need to do this here for this ring um, as you can see here for this eight ring outer ring so we'll just do this quickly um, let's go slide and let's see what we can do here yeah okay so we will make this something like i don't know let's make it 12 centimeters overall and let's make sure that we don't mess up anything on it well sorry the video just stopped i'm really really sorry about that uh, i think my hard disk space was empty this is why it stopped recording um so let's start uh, where i left off so i think the geometry should not be messed up we should still have quads all along at least i hope so and i think this is really really necessary so i think i will just leave this here and as you can see yes this is still a quad 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 what do we have here any triangles here who is the real triangle please stand up um okay um Okay, I think it looks pretty good. I think we are still good to go. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we will also do this on the other side as well. Select loop selection. Let's go into line mode and let's find 
Yes, exactly this one. And we will just go slide and do the exact same thing. New transform and we are done. Let's move this back into the subdivision surface. And this should look pretty good. So yes, so this was the modeling process of this eight. Um, I'm not sure if I really like to 100% the edges now. Might want to move this a little bit more far away so I get a little bit not so sharp edges. But I think I think we're fine. I think we're fine. This is basically um, pitching around on a on a really high scale. So I think this is definitely okay. Okay, so um, we'll just select this and um, move this for 90 degrees. And now we'll also create a K. So we have this nice 8K as well. Um, so what could be the best way to do this? We could also um, make a subdivision model out of one. We could model a K our, ourselves, but to be honest, I think I will just create now a mo text and we'll just create a K right here. Let's move it. Let's move it over here. And I think I want to definitely go for something else. I'm not sure which one I really used. Um, okay, it was definitely not this one. Maybe this one. I think I can just look it up. All right, found it. Uh, first of all, I also want to save this, I think. Um, let's call it 8K Tutorial. All right, and I think it was something with L Lhasa. Yes, okay, this was the K that I choose. And now we will definitely also bring in more depth here. So we'll move this, let's jump into this, uh, into this perspective, in the right perspective. I will bring this here and now we'll just change the depth. I think 60 centimeters was it, right? Okay, so let's change this here to 60 centimeters. Um, now we'll just make this a little bit bigger, so the height. And I think I want to align the 8 from this edge here to the beginning of this edge. So let's make it even bigger. Yeah, something like that. Maybe 500 might be fine. Okay. And now we will also create caps. Uh, fillet cap, fillet cap and convex might be fine steps i want to have two and two and let's change here to garaging lines so i can see a little bit better what's going on okay let's maybe change this here to concave might look a little bit better all right okay so i think this is our basic 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 picture for now I think it is. Yes. All right. And now we'll just simply mm, model quickly here. Um, or let's just simply create a cube. And um, let's jump. Yeah. Let's jump into perspective mode and make it here a little bit smaller. Yeah. It's maybe maybe sixty centimeters as well. And we will definitely make this here bigger. Something around this might be okay. So what is this? Let's make it 809, uh, let's make it 900. And let's make it also in the set 900. Okay, looks pretty good. Um, let's make this editable. Let's select this polygon, delete this, delete this. Control A, extrude, we extrude it out, whoops, a little bit bigger maybe, something like that, 30 centimeters might be fine. And let's change the maximum angle here um, to something above 89 degrees, so the edges fit together. All right, subdivisions, we will make two subdivisions, all right. Uh, select loop selection, we select this one, extrude, 
uh, create caps ticked off. We will extrude this here inwards. All right. Now we go select loop selection into line mode. Select this line right here. Um, hold down the shift key, select this line, this line, this line. And I think we will also select this line right here. Okay, right click, bevel. And we will make a nice bevel right here, maybe with more subdivisions, maybe. Let's make it three subdivisions, something like that. Let's see how this looks. Okay, I think we could have beveled this a little bit more, so let's do it again. Um, maybe something like that. Yes. Okay, subdivisions maybe five. And we should be good to go. All right. So now we select all we have here. Um, let's just jump into object mode, select all the, uh, select the cube, then hold on the shift key, select all. Now we'll just simply scale this down a little bit because it's really, really big right at the moment. Okay, all right. Maybe still a little bit too big. Let's bring this even more down. Okay. And uh, let's start with the shading. So we can just simply drop in a plane. Uh, bring this here a little bit more into the middle. Or well, it spawns at the middle, so we probably should bring over this here. So we bring this over here. All right. Plane doesn't need to have any segments. So we can save some polygons if we want to. Um, now we just simply scale out the plane. All right. And now we'll just simply start up Octane Render and let's see what we get. First of all, okay, this is still a little bit up in the air, which is not really good. So we'll just simply select all this, go into move mode, bring this down here. Uh, let's see here in the right mode how this looks. Yeah, might be fine like that. Okay, let's start up Octane Renderer once again. Okay, looks good so far. Um, let's see the right angle. Yeah, maybe something like that. I think this might be a little bit too high. I'm not 100% sure. Hmm. I think I want to lower this a little bit here, this um, this cube. So let's jump into scale mode and let's scale this down a little bit. Jump right in here and let's move it down to the plane again. And I think the 8 is still not aligned to the plane. There is still some, some space. Yes, there is still some space. So we will move this downwards even a little bit more. And the K might be a little bit bigger because of the bevel. Um, I think I will just hide the bevel in the back. Um, so we just go cap. All right, and now we can move down the K as well. Okay, that's good. All right, okay, I think now I like it a little bit more. Okay, so let's set up Octane Renderer. Um, let's create an HDRI environment, objects HDRI environment. And you will get this HDRI as well, definitely. Just have to find it. Uh, clients, Filoro, Gold. Yes, this one. Nice. Now we'll switch here uh, in the settings to pass tracing as well. Set the samples to something like, I don't know, 1000 might be fine. Okay, now we'll definitely uh, give the HDRI a little bit more power. So something like 3 might be fine. Um, then we go create shader cinema for the Octane, Octane material. We will go glossy and we will create a nice silver material. So diffuse uh, will be set to 10% black here in the V, 10%. All right. Uh, index will be something like eight. Roughness will be something like, well, we will play with the roughness a little bit later on. Let's change this a little bit down here. So it's really, really glossy. Let's apply this here to the cube. Uh, let's call this, what is this? Um, I don't know. 
let's call it just simply rectangle and we will call this k and the subdivision surface will be called 8 and also this 8 oh, whoops all right and we will apply this to the k and to the 8 as well or to the subdivision doesn't really matter let's reload the scene and as you can see we're already getting some nice reflections in here um, let's create another shader cinema for the octane octane material uh, diffuse cinema of the octane image texture and you will get this texture as well of course as you might have guessed um, textures or letter i will just take this one here and let's bring this onto the plane let's reload the scene as you can see way too big we will change this here to cubic let's reload the scene once again might look okay i think already maybe a little bit smaller let's bring it to 80 80 80% 80% here in the length and in the length V so it's a little bit smaller yes and now we will also change this here to glossy and now I think index something like 2 and now we'll definitely play around with the roughness so so that's not so glossy and we will copy this texture copy channel bring it into bump bump paste channel and I think I need to click here on invert and yeah I think now we can go down with the roughness a little bit more because of the bump it's just just changes the overall feeling of the ladder a little bit so yeah so I think this looks already pretty good um, so the next thing I want to change is the HDRI a little bit. Let's play a little bit with the rotation so we get different, ref different reflections, as you can see. Definitely has some kind of impact. Okay, no, it's too bright. This is really a matter of taste, so you definitely have to find now the spot where the lightning, um, where you want to have the lightning. So this is just simply the way no i think i want to have it there and yeah, maybe something like that yeah i think this looks pretty good okay all right let's maybe bring the scale down of the ladder a little bit more let's bring it maybe to 50 50 50 it's a 50 50 <laughs> and uh, let's reload the scene let's see how it looks Yes, looks pretty good, I think. Light maybe a little bit more to the left. To the left, to the left. Sorry for that. Um, okay, I think it looks good as well. And I also want to have a little bit of some kind of black spots, as you can see. Because when, when metal um, doesn't really get much light, it gets absolutely dark. So it turns almost really absolutely black, as you can see. And I really want to have this a little bit in this picture as well. Okay, alright. Might look good already. Um, I think I want to uh, zoom out a little bit more. Uh, let's create a camera from this angle. Create camera. Let's put a Cinema for the Octane tag on it, camera tag. Let's go to Scene Lens. Um, uh, first of all, camera image are enabled. Let's reload the scene. Now I definitely want to have a depth of field. So I will up this here, maybe something to 3. 3 might be really crazy. Okay, this is 33. This is definitely not okay. So I think we will bring this here to 3, something like that. Aperture edge, something like, I don't know, 2.5, something like that. Even so, this will probably have not so much impact here on this shot, but might look still good. Let's maybe even bring it to 3. Okay. And another thing that I want to do is definitely jump into the camera imager and change maybe the response. Even so, we can do this all in post work, but I just want to see different curves right here into the in the camera. See what I can get. Maybe just render it out this way and then make my final color correction inside of Photoshop, something like that. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, well, there. This is really a matter of taste. I mean, if you like a curve, just simply take it, render it out, and then make your final adjustments in Photoshop. I didn't find one curve now that I did really, really absolutely love. So, uh, might be something like. Okay, this is linear then already. Okay, so let's jump back. I think the second one or something like that. The third one. Okay, where was it? Yeah, I think maybe something like that. I'm not sure. I mean, I could play here for hours. I mean, always when I go through the curves, through the, through the pre-made curves, I can always play for hours. I think I will just simply uh, take one, this one, and, and just simply leave it. Okay. Um, okay, so the next thing, I definitely want to get rid of the vignetting because I want to do this in post work. And um, I think the depth of field might be a little bit too strong. Or maybe... I should change the camera angle a little bit more. Maybe there's something like that. We could also change the lens of the camera, but I think this time I definitely want to go with 36 millimeters on this shot. So, yeah. Hmm. Let me look at my reference picture. Okay. So let's bring this here in the middle and let's also change the final resolution so this will also definitely give us a little bit of a difference here okay let's reload the scene all right maybe a little bit closer closer okay and let's see what we get now yeah i think this looks fine i think i love it Maybe the letter a little bit bigger. Let's maybe bring this here to 60, 60. Um, it's just the small details that disturb me sometimes and I just want to have a little bit better. So I think right now it looks absolutely perfect. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, uh, I want to have a little bit kind of a variance here inside of the metal. So I don't want to have it 100% clean. So we just can do this quickly. Um, you will get this map as well. So let's just simply jump into the roughness. Uh, we will create a mixed texture. And here the amount we will also change to a texture. Cinema of the Octane image texture. Image, image texture. Yeah, English is really hard. At least for me. Um, anyway, um, then let's search for this texture. Uh, here we go. Metal glossiness. Okay. Now we change this texture one to... Uh, where is it? No, no, float texture. Okay, do the exact same thing here. Float texture. And now we'll bring this here to something like 0.01. So where it's really clean, it has now a, a, a glossiness of, of 99%. And uh, here we will bring this here to something like... And this really depends now on how strong you want it. So if you want to have the difference, something like 0.2. So... Um, let's change this here to 0.26. Let me show you this quickly. So if we render this again, you can definitely see the difference now. At least I hope so. Yeah, you can definitely... Okay, and we also... Sorry for that. I need to change this here to cubic and also here to cubic. So this will definitely look better than... Yes, all right. So as you can see, uh, here on on the on the K here on the front, you see now the difference. Also here and here, you can definitely tell the difference. Now is the question, and this is also a matter of taste: how strong do you want to have this difference? We can also bring it to 0.36, then it will be even stronger. Um, let's maybe reload the scene, um, and I will fire up my cigarette again. Mm. So as you can see now the difference is really really strong so where it's clean it's probably still at um at 99 percent glossiness so really really glossy but where it's um damaged or touched or call it whatever uh it's now at a glossiness of something like um 100 minus 36 is 65 percent uh is yeah 65 percent 
So this would be a glossiness now of 64% where it's dirty. So I think this doesn't really look too good. So I think I will bring you something to 0.16. So you can just see it a little bit on the 8, almost not anymore. So I think I think this will bring this maybe to 0.2. And I think this 0.2 is something um, is something that looks really good. And also here on the plane, we need to change this here to cubic. We already did change this cubic, but this doesn't really look good here. I don't like this. Oh, that's the wrong plane. Sorry. Uh, here on the rectangle, we also need to change this to cubic. And let's reload it. Yes. And let's maybe make this here a little bit bigger. Maybe something like 160, 160 on this rectangle right here. Okay. So I think I just want to move the camera a little bit more like this and then we are ready to go. Yeah, probably. Okay, let's move a little bit more inwards. Yeah, okay. Now, now I love it. All right. Okay, so we can render this out now. Um, let's just simply go to Octane Save. Uh, we'll definitely render this out 32 bit. Uh, let's call this 8K Tutorial. All right, open XR 32 bit. Um, change here to Octane Renderer. Bring this here, 8 bit at least float tone mapped. Um, anything else I want to do? I don't think so. We already did set the max samples here in the settings uh, in the past tracing slot uh, to 1000, which is probably too much. Um, but I think it will render really, really fast. So let's go render to picture viewer. And like I said, if you want to render this out in 8K or something like that, I think I did change the subsamples down to 300. Then just simply did type in my 8K format. I'm not sure what it is right now. I think 7,600 anything and 4,300 anything or so. Just simply Google it, the 8K format, and then just simply um, render it out and... I think that's really, really cool. Uh, did it look, did at least look really, really nice, to be honest. Okay, so as you can see, the shot already looks good. The DOF looks good. Here we get in some light, which looks also really, really good. The ladder looks okay. It's a little bit more of a glossy ladder. This is also a matter of taste. I mean, you could change down the glossiness a little bit more of the ladder if you want to. We could also increase the bump a little bit more if we want to. Um, these are all really, I think, matter of taste, but I think it already looks pretty good. And as you can see, we, with my one 780 GTX uh, that I have right now, um, you can see the samples. Um, we are really, really, um, really, really fast. So we are already almost at 500 samples of the 1000. So the rendering time for this picture is um, yeah, something around two minutes, three minutes. So this is absolutely nothing, I think. So there's definitely no problem to really render this out in real 8K. Okay, so I will make here a little pause and uh, I will start up again when it's finished and then we'll do some final touches in Photoshop and then we will finish this tutorial. All right, so here we have our picture uh, in Photoshop. So let's do a double click right here. And I think I have the German version right now. So I hope you excuse that. Um, I will uh, first of all go to picture uh, mode and change the mode here to 16 bit. No, not. Uh, no, don't put it together. Thanks. Okay, then we go to filter. I will go for an um, what is this called? I think it would be just better if I were working with the English version of Photoshop. Um, Objektivkorrektur in German. What is it called in English? Probably um, something with correction. Um, mm, lens correction, probably. All right, so let's open this up. Let's go here to um, user defined. And I will definitely bring in some red. Um, what is it called? 
um, chromatic aberration. So I will bring in some chromatic aberration, some some red and also some greenish. Yes, and now we'll also bring in a little bit of a vignetting effect here. And I think I will make this vignetting effect really, really strong. So something like that, maybe. No, that's maybe too strong. Or maybe something, minus 43 might be okay. So let's click on OK. So this is how it looks now. Now we go just simply uh, picture, correcture, um, curves. And now we'll jump into the blue. And I think I will make this a little bit more like this. And let's bring this down here. Okay. This is now also really a matter of taste. It really depends on you what you want to do. Okay, let's also jump into the greenish. Maybe. But I don't really want to have it greenish. Just want to see a little bit of a difference here. All right, okay. The red. Maybe we might want to change this down here a little bit, something like that. Okay. Okay, let's jump back into the blue. I think I really want to make this even a little bit more. Or maybe not. Like I said, this is really a matter of taste. I mean, post work, if you're only playing with colors and stuff like that, most of the time it really depends on you where where you want to go. Okay, and I think finally we'll also try a camera raw filter maybe and see what I can do there. I mean, I can also change the temperature right here. So as you can see, we can go something like that if we want to. We can go in this direction. But I think we were just fine, maybe. Yes, definitely. Okay. We can also change the light here now a little bit. So if you want to have more light, we can also do that or make it darker. As you can see, as we go darker, we also can see more um, the damage details here on the on the eight. Um, I think I think the brightness was just okay. We can also change the contrast if we want to a little bit more. Maybe give it a little bit more contrast. And then here we can also change the clarity, which also looks probably good. So I think I will change the clarity a little bit, something like that. Okay. And let's maybe put another curves on it. Uh, or maybe let's make a, a correction. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what it's called right now. Okay. Okay, and let's try another curve. Let's jump into the blue once again. I don't want to have it too bluish, to be honest, but... I think I think we are done to be honest. I don't really want to change here a lot anymore. I'm really satisfied with this picture already. Well we could bring in here so a little bit of reddish. This might look cool as well. Um, you can do that if you want to. I mean no question. Yeah, oh maybe maybe something like that. Okay. Alright, so I think it looks uh, pretty cool, um, was a really, really fast tutorial, I mean, I already did this today, and um, so yeah, um, I mean, yeah. I, I, when I did it for the first time, I didn't really need much longer, I think it took something like one and a half hour when I did it for the first time, now probably the tutorial takes something like one hour or something like that. Um, so yeah, so this was really some some kind of basic modeling. I just simply f thought I'll show you how how I did this, how I made this, and I hope you learned a little bit a little bit something. And um, 
I want to say a huge thanks again for every follower, everyone that purchased the premium tutorial, everyone that liked the video, everyone that commented, all the website owners that post my stuff, uh, CG Record, It's Art Mac especially, and all the other websites that did post my work. And uh, thanks to Silverwing, aka uh, Raphael Rao. Uh, thanks for all the hard work that you did put into me. Really, really much appreciate, man. Okay, so if you want to support my work a little bit, um, just jump to my homepage, maybe buy one of my premium tutorials, check them out. You probably or hopefully learn a lot. Um, it's always really, really much appreciated if you do something like that. And uh, if you did like this tutorial, just simply leave a like on VMO uh, or follow me on Facebook, which would be also really, really much appreciated. All right. So I wish you a nice day and uh, I hope to talk to you soon, guys. Bye bye.